Upgrading your SharePoint framework projects using Office 365 CLI code tour upgrades. Uh, my name is Hugo Bernier. I'm an MVP. I'm also a proud member of the Patterns and Practices virtual team. I can be reached on my blog and on Twitter, and uh, don't be shy to reach out to me. Uh, let's talk about what is Office 365 CLI. Well, if you don't know what Office 365 CLI is, I'm really offended, uh, and I'm not talking to you ever again. Uh, it's it's really a, a you know CLI is a command line interface uh, that allows you to manage your Office 365 tenant and your SharePoint framework projects on any platform. Unlike you know some other command line tools uh, or PowerShell -y kind of things where it was not so available in, in the past. Uh, to install it, you just need to use uh, NPM and uh, you deploy it with the G tag or the G flag to make it uh, global. Uh, so it's at PNP Office 365 CLI. And to use it, really all you need to do is to type Office 365 in your command or terminal or any anything you use to type your commands. At the bottom, I've included some URLs. Uh, one of them is to have access to kind of all the documentation, and uh, one the other one I think is just access to code if you want to contribute because this is an open source initiative that everyone can contribute to. And what we'll be showing today is actually something that I had the opportunity to contribute to. So one of the commands that are available in Office 365 CLI is the SPFX project upgrade. And what it allows you to do, and this is this is probably very timely uh, given the, the fact that you know SPFX 111 is is coming soon, uh, is the ability for you to take your SPFX project from pretty much any version uh, 1.0 uh, and above, and to convert it uh, to any specific specified version. Now, the the one thing that we have to be clear is this command does not change your project. What it does is it gives you the instructions or the steps to upgrade your project. Uh, but all you need to do is you type, you know, after you've typed Office 365 and you get this this pretty new uh, command prompt, uh, you just type SPFX project upgrade, and then you put the options. And the options are listed here on the screen, but I'll show you a little bit uh, further later. Uh, and then the types of upgrades that you can do are text, JSON, Markdown, and Tour. Now, the reason why we, we didn't want to change your project is because depending on the complexity of your project, you might have a lot of uh, NPM packages that are included in your project that may or may not be compatible with uh, the newer versions of the SPFX upgrades. And uh, this is something that you have to do yourself. You have to validate every every component that you've got in your project to make sure that it upgrades uh, successfully. But what the the report uh, or the steps give you is really kind of a, the full detailed list of what you have to do. The problem is if you're working on a big project, like the, the project I'll be showing you had a lot of steps uh, for me to upgrade, it becomes really hard to keep track of, okay, well, was I on step 11 or step 111? I can't remember. And this is where the uh, code tour upgrade comes in. Now, what is code tour? Well, code tour is actually a Visual Studio Code extension. The URL is at the bottom here, aka.ms slash code tour. And it, it was not written or it was not intended to be used for the Office 365 CLI. It's just we saw a great opportunity here. Code tours are something that allows you to uh, record a, and, and play back a guided walkthrough of your code in your project. And you can have as many code tours as you want in your projects. In fact, we've started to add code tours in a lot of the PNP samples. Uh, the uh, S, uh, SPFX starter kit now has a code tour that walks you through the architecture of the solution. And we're planning on adding more and more. Uh, so it's it's a great way to guide people through you know where where they should pay attention, uh, and what it does is it creates a tours folder uh, dot tours, uh, and that's what our solution does. So now uh, because my upgrade process actually 
uh, requires doing npm install. I actually pre-recorded this because I didn't know how much time I would have to do this demo. Uh, so this is uh, one of the samples that I've created, it seems like 20 years ago, but it's actually probably last year, uh, which contains uh, probably a dozen web parts in it. And so it's a big project to upgrade. And it's a project that's available in the samples repository. So I all I did is I open the Visual Studio Code uh, or the project folder, uh, and I open my command line there. And then I just typed Office 365 and hit Enter. And what I get is I get this uh, command prompt. And that's the command prompt that's provided to me by uh, Office 365 CLI. And then I just type SPFX project uh, upgrade. And then uh, I always do help because I never remember what 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 the instructions are. Uh, and then what you'll see here is, I'll even remember, right here, the uh, output, this here. So the command is output, and the output types are JSON, uh, text, markdown, or tour. And the default is text. So once you've, uh, once you've done that, so that's actually just, again, I'm in the current project folder, so I don't really need to do anything fancy here. I just need to just type output and then tour. And that's it. That's my demo. Thank you, everyone. Uh, no, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, really, the code tour has been created. The upgrade has been created. And this was not sped up. This is actually real time. This is how long it took to do this. So then what you do is you open uh, your Visual Studio Code project. And you'll notice at the top here, there is a new folder called tours right here. I know it's green on green. It's hard to see. But uh, it, it adds this to your project. Now, if you don't have uh, Code Tours installed as an extension, it doesn't do anything, right? It's just a folder with some JSON files in it, and you can absolutely ignore it. But if you have Code Tours installed, automatically it shows you this window here uh, that lets you start the Code Tour. So if you click on Play, and let's do that. If you click on Play, what it should do is it should launch a Code Tour for you. And it shows you here, and this is, a, I have to, to admit, this is a big project. It's got 146 steps. But it gives you the steps here. And you see it says, execute the following command. And all you need to do is click on that blue button or that blue text. It will automatically start the command for you. Uh, now, we could just sit here and wait until npm install has been completed. But I recorded the video to make it faster. So once it's done, you actually click on um, right here. You just click on Next, and it takes you to step two. And as we go through the whole process, we actually walk you through every file so you know exactly what's being changed in your project. So you can see here, low dash subset is showing uh, version 171. But at the end of this step, it'll show me that it's on version 110. So you keep on doing this until you get to, and I've skipped a lot of steps here. I'm already at step 10. But then you'll have some other steps where if we go to the next step, you'll see this one, it can't be updated for you uh, with a command. So it says, this is what you need to do. You need to copy the version number from 171 to 110. So uh, you, this is where you exercise your copy and paste skills. And you just uh, do that. Now, when it when you do this, you have to keep in mind that you still want the JSON to be properly formatted when you're entering the information. Uh, so there's a few steps in there where we ask you to add new nodes and things like that. Just remember, sometimes you need to add some you know commas or or things like that. So uh, you go through all the steps. It's usually not 146 steps. It's usually about 20 or so steps. Uh, but you go through all the steps, and then eventually, when you get to the end, it'll tell you um, this is an optional step if you have any problems. Uh, because sometimes some people will get uh, problems with SP, HTTP client configuration. Uh, it tells you you can just run npm dedupe. Otherwise, it says that's it, you're done. 
Uh, there is one additional thing that you can do is if you really don't want people to be to have to see the store when they open the project, you can delete the tour folder. Um, but I strongly, I, and I actually strongly recommend you delete the tour and then go nuts and create your own tour so you can, you can introduce people to the content and the structure of your code. Um, so that's, that's it. At this point, uh, once you've done this, you can just run your NPM build and you have, if, if everything went well, you actually have a, a fully upgraded SPFX project. Now, there is one little thing that I should point out is the the code tour extension was updated yesterday and uh, of course it happened just the day before i was doing a demo uh, and what could happen is depending on the version the the code tour schema might require your your file to be uh, instead of having slash a uh, dot slash like this it might have to be uh, just the the relative path uh, from from the root of the project so if you open the code tour and depending on the version of uh, the code tour that you have installed, if the code tour doesn't start, that's more than likely what it is. So you'd have something like this. You just go and remove this. I just did a global search and replace and the code tour will be happy. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm available for questions. Um, Vesa? There, there was a question from Neil Mugan. Uh, can we use code tour with the summary upgrade because it will be shorter? Summary upgrade. Not not following on the question, at least on this one. Uh, I'm not sure what the summary upgrade is. But anyway, so when you're when you are executing the Office 365 CLI, uh, it will give you the steps, and this is a great add-on. Actually, pinpoint you to the actual locations, uh, actual um, places where your changes needs to be done, um, and obviously we from the SharePoint Framework Engineering are working directly with the Office 365 CLI team, uh, so that whenever the 1.11 comes out, there will be immediately available upgrade uh, steps uh, from the 1.10 to 1.11 as needed. So um, that's, that's being already tested actually as I speak for the 1.11. So that, that work is already ongoing. So really cool. Um, and then Hugo, you pointed out, um, but that's actually a good point as well. Anybody could use the, the code tours in general for approach, uh, and let's say creating an intro for the project, right? Yes, and in fact, uh, uh, Bo Cameron, David Warner, and I started uh, creating code tours for the uh, the SP Starter Kit because it's probably one of the largest solutions uh, out there that's made of a whole bunch of components. So we started with just an overview of the SP Starter Kit, and then we're actually going in and creating code tours for each of the web parts. So to just to lower the the adoption barrier and make it easy for people to understand the project structure. Yeah. And every new uh, SPFX web part sample that I'm creating, I'm actually adding code tours in them as well, just to kind of give the, the same tour that I would give if I was demoing this on a on a community call. I'm doing the same code tour uh, in the in the repos, and I uh, encourage you to do the same if you want to share code with other people. Absolutely. And I agree with Ralph. Code tour should be part of the review process. In fact. Uh, you may have noticed when you have a code tour running uh, that it's it's actually it gives you the ability to reply uh, because it's really intended as a as a quick way to review code. Um, you know, I, this is not a, a session about code tour, uh, but uh, code tour actually does allow you to bind your code tour to a, to a specific version uh, of of a commit in GitHub. So that uh, when you when you upgrade or you go back in history, you're actually able to see, uh, you know, the, the the code tour for that specific version. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And good good point from Ralph related on uh, this being a great tool for the for the remote work and and for the teamwork as well. Mm -hmm.